self-righteousness, the thoughts and the actions of, they have been at the forefront of my sermons the past couple of weeks. Job in his self-righteousness, he accused God of not caring about him because bad things had happened to him, a righteous man. Sarah and Abraham, we saw last week, believed that they were owed their blessing from God because of their righteousness. And when the Lord did not move fast enough for them, they decided to act hastily and irrationally to make their blessing happen for them. So I have asked the past couple of weeks, do we believe that we are the bosses of God? Do we believe that we can dictate to the Lord what to do and when to do it? And I said last Sunday that we, the genuine, we, the true believers, Mm -hmm. we can be very foolish in those moments of times where we question the Lord and then we decide to move ahead of him, Mm -hmm. believing that we know more to him, believing that we know what is best for us. Now, we, the true believers, we should know better than believing that our wisdom is wiser than the Lord's wisdom. We, the true believers, we should know better than believing that we know more than God knows. You see, we are playing the fool when we begin to believe it in our hearts that we know more than he does. We also know the end result of one that thinks that way. We know the end results of one that would play the fool like this. And playing the fool for so long, we know that one would eventually become a fool. And again, I tell you today that we know the end results of one that becomes sad fool. Now, let me make it clear here today that when I speak of the fool, I am speaking from a spiritual viewpoint. When I speak of the fool, you will often see me reference the book of Proverbs. And the reason why I do this is because Solomon spent a great deal of time in that book speaking about the foolish and the wise, and he did so from a spiritual viewpoint. I believe that Solomon, I believe that he did an excellent job in defining what makes one wise and what makes one a fool in their heart spiritually. We see that in the opening of Proverbs, there in the first chapter, in the first few verses there, we see that Solomon stated that a wise man will hear and increase learning. And a man of understanding will attain wise counsel, he said in the fifth verse. So the wise, Solomon defined, was one that was able to perceive words of understanding and receive instruction of wisdom, he said in the second verse. Now, the instruction of wisdom, we should understand, that comes from God. As Solomon said, fear of the Lord, that's the beginning of knowledge. Nothing else. Mm -hmm. The fear of the Lord, he said in the seventh verse there, is the beginning of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to pay very close attention to the fact that Solomon was defining wisdom not by the knowledge that one has procured of worldly doctrine, but by the instructions that they have procured from the Lord our God. So the fool, spiritually speaking, is one that does not fear the Lord. 
the fool, spiritually speaking, is one that does not seek to hear or even adhere to the instructions Mm -hmm. of God. As Solomon said, they, the fool, they despise God's wisdom and God's instruction. Mm -hmm. They much rather adhere to the instructions of others or to adhere to their very own instructions. So with that in mind, Let's consider what I have said of the self-righteous over the past couple of weeks here. The self-righteous, we have seen, they do not adhere to the instructions of God as they would much rather follow their own instructions. They do this believing that their wisdom is wiser than God's wisdom. And they believe it in their hearts that they have no need of God's wisdom. Now, by doing this, I want you to understand that the self-righteous are fully convicted and turning away from the instructions, the words of God. So the one that is fully convicted in their self-righteous is one, I tell you today, That is truly a fool. And in doing this, in believing this in their hearts, they, I tell you today, they deceive themselves. This is exactly what Paul said in his letter to the Galatians Mm -hmm. when he wrote, if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, He deceives himself. I can't think of a more elegant way of putting it. (laughs) Thank you, Paul. You know, we, we often speak of the devil being our great adversary, which is certainly very true. He's he's most definitely our great adversary. But at the same time, we often miss the fact that we ourselves can be our own worst enemy. You see, we can be our own worst enemy because of what we think we know. Mm -hmm. Because we believe we know everything. In other words, we can be our own worst enemy because of our Mm self-righteousness. You see, our self-righteousness, it can blind us. Our self-righteousness, it can deceive us into believing our very own deception. In other words, we can lie so much that we begin to believe our own lie. Now tell me that's not foolish. I tell you today that self-deception, it can be very grave just as scripture shows us that it can be. In the book of Isaiah here, Mm -hmm. we find that self-righteousness and the consequences of self-righteousness, it comes into focus for us. We know that both Israel and Judah, we know that they were consumed by their wickedness. Mm -hmm. They were consumed by their self-righteousness and in being consumed by their self-righteousness, they were deceived. They deceived themselves. All right, all right. And in deceiving themselves, they ended up turning away from God. And in turning from God, we know that eventually both the northern kingdom was conquered. The southern kingdom was conquered as well. We know that the northern kingdom was conquered by the Assyrians. Mm-hmm. And we know that the southern kingdom was conquered by the Babylonians. Now, the Babylonians, Mm -hmm. they're a very interesting bunch. And I actually want to focus on the Babylonians today. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to bring, I'm not going to focus much on Israel and Judah here today. I want to talk about the Babylonians. And I I want to do it for a very interesting reason that we will see here today. The, the Babylonians that we will see here today, here in our focus, they are also the victims 
of their own self-righteous deception. You see, the Babylonians, uh, they are considered by many to be the world's first superpower. Superpower. That sound familiar? In, in this passage of scripture here from the 47th chapter of Isaiah, we will see that the Babylonians, they certainly believed that they were all powerful. We will see here today that they believed they had no equals. We will see here today that they actually believed that they were untouchable. Sounds familiar? All right. See, this kind of mindset, I tell you today, it certainly sounds very familiar to me. Mm-hmm. That's just me speaking to myself. I don't know about you all, but, but what I just described to the Babylonians, it sounds very familiar in our world, in our society today. Yeah, yeah. Like we see in our society today, speaking of it, the Babylonians, they live with a very self-righteous mindset. We will see here in my key verse for this week's message that God pointed out about their mindset that the Babylonians, they thought so highly of themselves that their wisdom, the Lord said, their knowledge, I use air quotes there, had warped them. Had warped them is what God had said. Now to warp, that means to turn or to twist out of, or as if out of shape Mm -hmm. to warp means to choose to act wrongly or abnormally Mm -hmm. to warp means to pervert. It means to distort. Mm -hmm. Look at the mindset that the Babylonians had there. Their mindset was twisted out of shape. Their mindset, it was perverted. Their mindset, it was distorted. So what I want you to understand is that the self-righteousness of the Babylonians, it had, in other words, deceived them. They were so consumed with their own self-righteousness that they would go out and they would boast I am. Do you know who in scripture said the uh, the words I am to describe himself? Wasn't it God that said I am? I, I believe that it was God that said I am that I am. And here the Babylonians we see here in my key verse for today, we see them boasting and saying I am And then they say, there is no one else besides me. Do you catch the drift there? Do you see the graveness of this warped mindset that the Babylonians had? If by chance you do not happen to see it, let me explain the graveness of this self-righteous deception of the Babylonians that they had that again, I tell you is still present in our world today. You see self deception, it causes one to hide the truth from themselves. Even when they may recognize the truth, Mm -hmm. the one who deceives themselves will ignore it. They will hide from that truth. You see, for example, one can be told that the sky is blue. But if they believe that they know everything, they will find all kinds of ways to argue against you. (laughs) They will even tell you that the sky isn't blue. They will invent a color for you just so that they can be right and so that you can be wrong. Again, that sounds very foolish to me. But there are many people that are that way in our world today. What's frightening about this mindset, what's frightening about self-deception, again, is that some can deceive themselves so well that they begin to believe their own lie. And I tell you, that to me is very scary. Where you come up with the lie 
and you lie so much to the point that you believe it yourself. Living in such ignorance is what is leading many people away from the Lord today. They have lied about God so much that they begin to believe their own lie. So self-deception, we should understand, it has the power to lead to a very great sin, if you follow me. This great sin, it is to ignore the truth. It is to ignore the truth of God. It is to believe in one's own so-called might. It is to believe in one's so-called wisdom. It is to believe in one's so-called power more than the Lord. Many sadly have deceived themselves into believing in their own self-righteousness more than God's righteousness. As shown a couple of times here in this passage of scripture, there are many people who in our world today will boast the words, I am. They will think of themselves with that mindset of, I am, and there is no one besides me, there is no one that is on my level. I tell you today that we should pay a very great deal of attention to those Mm -hmm. that have this kind of self-righteousness in their hearts. We should pay a great deal of attention to this kind of self-righteous deception developing within our own hearts Mm -hmm. today as believers, because it is the so-called one who says that they are a believer that is quick to be the self-righteous one. Mm -hmm. So again, I tell you today that we ourselves as believers, we have to pay a great deal of attention to this kind of mindset growing within us today. You see, again, it is this kind of deception that ends up moving people away from the Lord because they are raising their righteousness above God's righteousness. And that's something that we should never do, especially we who genuinely believe in God. Now, let us note here why the Babylonians, let us know why they thought so highly of themselves so that we can be on the lookout for this mindset developing within us today. Here in the eighth verse, there in the 47th chapter of Isaiah, we will see that what led them to think so highly of themselves was again, that power and that might. They did not fear anyone or see anyone being on their level because of their perceived power and might. This is the kind of mindset where we are actually taught uh, as children that we ought to have, that, that, that no one is on your level. This way of thinking was to push us to be the best that we could be. This way of thinking was taught to us. It was given to us so that we could be confident in the things that we chose to do in life. But the danger of this mindset is when our confidence grows into being a superiority complex. When our humbleness leaves us, and when we begin to look down on others, thinking to ourselves and boasting that no one else is besides us. That's a very dangerous mindset to have. You see, the Babylonians, they looked down on others as they believed all people were beneath them. In fact, they thought nothing of God. As we saw kings like Nebuchadnezzar, who, who built images of himself to, to, to have others go out and, and worship it at a certain point in time when, when music was played. See, there's a history in our society of people looking down on others they believe are beneath them all because of their self-righteousness, all because of their pride and all because of their ego for which has deceived them. 
You see, I tell you today that no person should ever think in such a manner. The fact is, is that we are all human, and at the end of the day, none of us are perfect. To think so little of others while believing you are high and mighty mm -hmm. is, again, I tell you today, a very grave deception. I want you to understand that this is a mindset that is frowned upon by the Lord. Mm -hmm. As shown when the Pharisee in his self-righteousness, mm -hmm. he, he, he prayed himself up, yeah. believing himself to, to be better than the tax collector. He thought high and mighty of himself as he frowned upon and, and looked down on the tax collector. But the tax collector was the one that was justified in God's eyes. So we will see here today that the Babylonians, they lived according to that mindset of self-righteousness. And in that mindset, we are told there in the eighth verse that they were given to pleasures. In their belief, power and might, the Babylonians believed that nobody could kill them even. Couldn't kill them and they couldn't, nobody could kill their loved ones as well. They said that they would not be widowed, that they would not even lose their children. Absent from this mindset was any humility. You see, the Babylonians, I want you to understand in the picture that I painted just a few minutes ago, they believed themselves to be gods. Mm -hmm. They saw themselves as gods. Mm -hmm. They believed that they should be worshipped. Mm -hmm. This again, I tell you, is the greatest deception of self-righteousness. To believe that you are perfect. Yeah. To believe that you are a God. See, personally, I tell you today that I live in a manner of truth and in a manner of humility. Where I value my life because I understand, I realize that I can be here one day and gone the next day. Right. Yeah. I, I live in a manner of truth and humility to know that I myself, I am not perfect. And I don't act like I am perfect. Right. You see, I understand that I am not immortal. As this physical body of mine, it can be and it will be destroyed. All right. All right. I'm not going to be here forever. Come on. Come on. Now, according to scripture, one day I will be like the Lord. I will put on my immortality, mm -hmm. but I've come to understand and realize that that day it has not come just yet. Right. Yeah. You see, we, we should not fool ourselves into believing ourselves to be something when we are not anything just yet. Right. We should not believe ourselves to be perfect we especially should not believe ourselves to be gods. In other words, we can't dictate our words on anybody else believing ourselves to be perfect when they aren't perfect. All of us are the same. I tell you today, stop playing the fool. See, anything that you and I gain is because the Lord has given it to us. Mm -hmm. It is not because of our own power. Mm -hmm. It is not because of our own might. Right, what the Babylonians themselves, what they had gained, mm -hmm. it did not come because of their own power. It did not come because of their own might. It did not come because of their own hands. Mm -hmm. It came because of God's hands. In the book of Habakkuk, just as we saw here today, the Lord said in the first chapter of Habakkuk, starting at the sixth verse there, he, he, he clearly told the prophet that he raised up the Chaldeans, he raised up the Babylonians himself. And he did so for the specific purpose of punishing Judah. And their wickedness. That is why the Babylonians, that is why God raised them up. That is why they had all that they had. 
not because of their own power, not because of their own might. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. As we see in our scripture today, God gave his people over to the Babylonians mm -hmm. because he was angry. And we see there in the sixth verse, he gave them over because he was frustrated with them. Someone may ask, well, why was God angry and frustrated with his people? Well, we, we know why God was angry and frustrated with his people. He was angry and he was frustrated with them because they had strove against him in their self-righteousness. All right. All right. Their self-righteousness, it, it got the better of them. As we know, in their self-righteousness, they chose, they weren't forced, they chose to live in wickedness by worshiping idols, mm -hmm. by, by offering up offerings to those idols. Mm -hmm. Then they turned around and they offered up vain offerings to the Lord. Then, while doing those things, as we have seen in, in the book of Micah and in the book of Habakkuk, they brought great harm upon one another. While ignoring God's instructions, mm -hmm. while God sent them prophet after prophet telling them to repent, telling them to turn back, the Jews kept saying, nope, no way, not going to do it. Mm -hmm. My way is the right way. Our way is better than God's way. Let me keep on trucking ahead. Mm -hmm. Ignoring the instructions of God in their self-righteousness, yeah, yeah. believing that they were doing right the whole time they was fooling themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So because they strove with the Lord, God raised up the Babylonians. Yeah, yeah. And we're told there in scripture from the 47th chapter, mm -hmm. he profaned his inheritance for them. Judah in their self-righteousness, they was punished mm -hmm. as they lost their land. They lost their temple. They even lost the treasures of that was stored in the temple. In other words, everything the Jews believed gave them power. Everything they believed gave them might. God took away from them. God, in doing this to his own people, he should, that should have actually served as a warning to the Babylonians to the people who were even more self-righteous than the Jews. But we're told that in the 47th chapter that the Babylonians ignored it. They paid it no attention. I would suggest to you today that the Lord doing this to his own people, it should also serve again as a warning to all people especially those who are out there in the world today playing and deceiving themselves by their own self-righteousness. All of those who are out there playing the fool, there is a warning sign for you today. God, we must remember he is in charge of all things and he's in charge of all things at all times. Through the prophet Jeremiah, the Lord said, I have made the earth. I made the man and the beast that are on the ground by my great power and by my outstretched arm and have given it to whom it seemed proper to me. God gives us what he desires. God raises us up, all of us. Daniel spoke of this same thing when he spoke about how the Lord even removes kings and, and raises them up as well. You see, we should never deceive ourselves into believing all we accomplish we do by our own might. This is a very foolish thought for us to have as God is the one who moves on all of our behalves. Who are we to believe that we can raise ourselves above others and then at the same time turn around and also raise ourselves above the Lord? What kind of fool are we to think that way? You see, when you begin to fool and deceive yourself into believing that there is no one beside you, I would tell you today that 
the alarms should be ringing in your heart. When you notice that others are thinking and behaving in such a way to where they are going and saying, I am, and no one is besides me, the alarm, I again tell you today, it should be ringing in your heart. You should be paying very close attention. You see, I tell you today that this is the path that leads to destruction. And you should yourself, you should be turning back away from going down that path. And when you notice that somebody else is going down that same path of deception, you should be again encouraging them to turn back as well from going down that path of a self-righteous deception because we know again what waits all of those that go down that path of deception. You see, the Babylonians, they pay little attention to the price the Jews paid because of their self-righteousness as they ended up living in a manner where they trusted, we are told in their wickedness. Because of this, God said to the Babylonians there in the first verse of the 47th chapter of Isaiah, God said, come down and sit in the dust. Mm -hmm. God said, sit on the ground without a throne. You see, they had been sitting on the throne for quite some time, but God had just said to them, it's time for you to come off of that throne. Mm -hmm. Deception is over now. See, in a couple chapters prior there in the, fifth, in the 45th chapter of Isaiah, we'll see how the Lord spoke of Cyrus the Great, who history tells us and shows us came along the way to destroy the Babylonians. Mm-hmm. And even in scripture, we see how Cyrus freed the Jews from the, the captivity or the exile that they were in in Babylon. Yeah. Yeah. The Lord warned the Babylonians by saying to them, woe to him who strives with his maker. Mm -hmm. Yes, the Lord was their maker, just as he is all of our maker today. God, he then asked there in the 45th chapter of Isaiah and the ninth verse, shall the clay say to him who forms it, what are you making? Mm -hmm. Or shall your handiwork say, He has no hands. Imagine saying to God that God don't have any hands to move, to form us. Again, who are we to question the Lord, our maker, and believe that we are the boss of him? Who are we? You are fooling yourself today if you think that you can dictate to God what he should do and when he should do it. You are fooling yourself if you believe, if you truly believe that you can boss God around. Mm -hmm. No power or might that you believe you have in your self-righteousness can ever make you the dictator of God. As the Lord took away what made the Jews feel powerful and mighty, God set out to do to the Babylonians. We see there in the 47th chapter of Isaiah. It was time for the self-righteous to be humbled. Mm -hmm. It was time for them to be awakened from their self-deception. The Babylonians, they went the same way as many other empires and kingdoms went Mm -hmm. that were deceived by their own self-righteousness. The Babylonians, they fell. Mm -hmm. I tell you, that should serve as a warning for the self-righteous heart today. History shows us that the prideful, the one of pride only sits high for a short period of time before they eventually fall. And when they do fall, they fall in a very mighty way. Again, we should take this notion as a warning sign if we are living our lives playing the fool today, believing in our own might, believing in our own power. Mm -hmm. Let us remember that it was his pride and his self-righteousness that led to the fall of the devil. Mm -hmm. As Jesus has said in scripture, 
whoever exalts himself will be humbled, will be brought down. What do they say about pride? It always goes before the fall. We cannot and we should not deceive ourselves so much that we begin to believe a lie of our own making and then begin to miss all of the warning signs of our fall that God is sending out to us. When God is saying, hey, you better stop. You're about to fall. We, we, we should not be so blind to God saying you're about to fall. You're about to fall because certainly I tell you today that that fall is going to come if you keep going down that path. If you're so blinded by your self-righteousness, if you're so deceived by your self-righteousness, you are going to miss all of the warning signs coming from the Lord and you are going to hit rock bottom. Mm -hmm. I encourage you today to do this. Stop being a fool. I encourage you today to stop playing the fool before you become that fool. I encourage you today to stop following after a fool before you again become that fool. In order for us to stop playing the fool, Paul encouraged us to always self-examine ourselves to test whether we are in the faith. Personally, I tell you today, I believe that we should always be self-examining ourselves spiritually so that we can ensure ourselves that we are first remaining humble, secondly, not being self-righteous, and thirdly, not deceiving ourselves. We should always be examining ourselves spiritually. You see, if you can never stop to take a look at yourself, then that already speaks to the idea that you believe you are too righteous to even examine your own self, to even look at your own heart. You are already in trouble. To the Romans, Paul encouraged them, and therefore all of us as well, not to think of ourselves more highly than we ought to think, but to think soberly, Paul said, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Sadly, many of us have already become too righteous in our own hearts to look within ourselves, to examine our own thoughts, and to even examine our own actions. If you are at that point right now, I'm giving you a warning sign, and this warning sign is coming from the Lord today. Stop. Like I said last week, slow down. Take your time. If you desire to no longer be deceived by your own self-righteousness, the very first step that you should take, which is often the case, it should be to humble yourself. You see, if you can humble yourself, if you can examine your own blemishes, if you can examine your own flaws, I tell you today that that will be a huge first step in the right direction. That will be the step in a direction to where we can stop deceiving ourselves. That could be uh, that would be the step in the direction to where we can let go of our pride to where we can let go of our self-righteousness. Secondly, I would say to you today that, again, we must not only remain humble, but we must begin to think soberly. We must think subdued of ourselves as well as all those who are around us. You see, we are no higher than each other. As all of us are, again, we are all flawed and all of us, we are all imperfect. That said, every single one of us has the Lord who is more than able to lift us all up. You see, again, God is more than able of lifting us up from our blemishes. He's more than able of, of being able to lift us up from our flaws. You see, we can't do that by ourselves. I tell you again, the fact of the matter is that none of us can do anything by ourselves. 
And you see, it is God who do all of these things for us. And I will tell you today that we should give God all due credit. Everything that we have received in our life, it has came from the Lord. And we should be so humble to give God all due credit, to give him praise. Because again, he is worthy of that praise. Let us stop playing the fool by thinking of ourselves more highly than we do. All of us, as you have heard me say quite a bit over the years, we are all in need of God. Stop fooling yourself into believing that you don't need him. You see, it is when we truly give ourselves to him that the veil of deception is lifted from our eyes. You see, it is certainly better to move about with a heart that is a soul that is not obscured, that is not blinded, that is not deceived by our self-righteousness. It is better to move with a heart that is clear, in other words, than to move with a heart that is obscured, to move with a heart that is blinded by our self-righteousness. The heart that is not obscured by self-righteousness, I tell you today that it is a heart that is fit for all of those that are around them. It is a heart, I will tell you today, that is fit for the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. Amen.